and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to continue with trigonometry and look at the addition formulae and exact values. I'm going to work through three questions and as ever please do grab a pen and paper and work alongside, pausing the video and rewinding when you need to. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. Okay, so I've written up the addition formulae for the sine and cos um, and the only thing really here to notice is that um, if it's plus and minus for sine, it's plus and minus in the middle, but for cos, they flip the other way. So if you've got something plus something in the middle of here, you'd have minus and same vice versa, so that sign flips. Um, to get the tan formula, you, you do need to learn these off by heart, and it's good to learn the tan one off by heart as well, but I'll just show you quickly, I'll talk through how to derive the tan one because it's a little bit more to remember. So to get tan, remember with the identity, tan is the same as sine divided by cos. So tan of A plus B is the same as sine of it divided by cos of it. So I'm going to put this over this. And the way to simplify this up now is to divide all of these terms by one of them and we're going to divide by this term here. We're going to divide by cos A cos B. We're going to divide each of those four by cos A cos B. So on top, when we divide by cos A cos B, dividing sine A by cos A will give us tan A and dividing cos B by cos B will just cancel out. So we'll be left with tan A. This term we're dividing by cos A cos B, cos A divided by cos A cancels out and sin B divided by cos B gives us tan B. We're dividing this entire term by itself so that will just be 1 and again these signs flip um, and they'll just do the same. Uh, this term here divided by cos A cos B will have tan A and tan B as well. So that's the formula that it's good to memorise but if you want to derive it you can do quickly. So there are the addition formulae. The other thing that comes up with these kind of questions is exact values so I'll show you those now. Okay, so here are the exact values, um, and it's good to know these off by heart. You can get them, obviously, on your calculator, but it's just really good to know these ones and have them up your sleeve. I've put the angles in both degrees and radians, because you need to know both of them. There are a few ways of memorising these. You can either memorise the picture of the table, or you could use special triangles, or you can use, I think there's a rule using your hands or something, but have a Google of that and see if you can find a way that helps you. Obviously you can use your calculator to get these, but if you know them off by heart then it helps you in, with certain questions, knowing what exactly they're asking you. Let's have a look now at using these and the addition formulae in some questions. Okay, here we have the first question, um, and we're going to use the addition formula for sine. Um, here we're given sine A and sine B. Um, these kind of questions, I haven't written it, but they would be expecting you to give the exact answer, an exact form. So, um, one of the temptations here would be to inverse sine of three-fifths to get what the angle is, um, and then go on that way. But if you do that, you'll be rounding decimals and you won't get the exact answer. So, the way to do this is there's a nice trick you can use um, little sketches of triangles to find out what sine and cos are because remember in the sine formula we'll need cos of both A and B as well. So let's use triangles to find cos of these things. I'm going to draw a little right angle triangle and label this angle here A. So sine is 3 over 5th and remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse so I'm going to label that opposite over hypotenuse, we know three over, th uh, 3 over 5. Now to get the last side we can use Pythagoras. So this, um, this side here will be 5 squared take away 3 squared, which is 25 take away 9, and that leaves us with 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. 
Of course, you might just know that that's a Pythagorean triple. So there are three values that work in Pythagoras with whole numbers, three, four, and five. We'll do the same for this triangle here. I haven't shown my working, but obviously 13 squared take away 12 squared left me with 25, and square root of that to get five. So now we, can, we could pull out cos and tan of A and B. We'll only need cos though in this addition formula. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's four fifths. Now we can go ahead and find this using the addition formula. Brilliant. And do remember this um, technique of finding sine, cos and tan if you're given one. Um, that's used quite a lot actually, so that could come up in any kind of trig questions. So that's a good thing to know. Well done. Let's look at the next question now. Okay, so we're asked for the exact value for cos of pi over 12. Again, if you type it into your calculator and just get the answer, you'd miss out on all the working marks. You need to show how to get it, but of course you can use the calculator to check your answer's correct. So let's look at how to use the addition formula to get this. Um, I'm looking at pi over 12 and I know that I can get that using some of the exact values that we saw in the table. I know pi over 3 and I know pi over 4 from the table. So this here is pi over 3 take away pi over 4. So I'm going to rewrite pi over 12. Sorry about this really acidic green, that's horrible, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to use the addition formula to expand that out. I've got a minus in the middle, so that's going to flip and change to a plus. Brilliant, I can't really simplify this answer, so it's fine to leave it like that. Let's look at the last question now. Okay, similar to the last question in that I'm going to use exact values I know to express 75. And we're in degrees now, so 75 degrees. Do pause the video here and have a go at this one yourself. Just thinking about 75 degrees, I know 30 and I know 45, so I can add them together. To simplify this fraction here, um, I don't like fractions within fractions, so I'm going to multiply by the denominator to clear that up. So I'm going to multiply every term by root 3. Now, that's simple enough as it is. You could leave it like that, or if they wanted you to go further and ask for it in, the, in a different form, what you could do here is rationalise the bottom. So you would multiply both top and bottom by the complement of that denominator. So root 3 plus 1. So there we go, that simplifies right down to just 2 plus root 3. Well done if you're getting that, keep practising those. I hope this was helpful. Have fun!